well, there's a great anointing in this building and I'll always feel the presence of God when I come in straight away. Um, I'd like to just say a wee prayer, if that's all right, before I start and just hand over what I say to God. So, Father, I just thank you for the honour of sharing your word, Lord. I just pray, Father, that you would be in the midst of this word, that you would speak to people's hearts, Lord, and what you want to say would be said. And I pray, Lord, anything of myself would be put to the side. Lord, just bless us time together and let us enjoy it. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I'm a big fan of a programme called The Repair Shop. I don't know if any of you have seen it on the TV. Um, it's a programme where people come along and they bring their loved treasures from family um, that they've had from many generations that may be worn out um, and they get them repaired and they go back and they collect them and the, there's a great unveiling of that thing, whether it be a teddy or a, a little tricycle or whatever it is they've had. might be medals from a, a, a honoured family men, member that was in the war or something and they get them back restored and they're just, it's amazing what these people can do. And it really impresses me and how these things can almost look like they're brand new again. So, um, and they're really, it's really quite exciting. I don't know if you've seen it. So, and those things that they renew, they can hand down the generations. You know, there's, and I'm sure you've got things in your home that are loved treasures, maybe photographs of your parents or your grandparents, maybe memorabilia of people that have gone past or that you want to remember because they were godly people or they were good influences in your life. And it's always good to remember those people and keep those treasures. And it's the same for the saints. You have to remember what the saints have done before we came along in the previous generations, the things that are built in the past, things that have been established in the spirit realm for us that we need to carry on. So today, I felt the Lord was saying, today's the day for restoration. And I want, to go, I want to read your scripture first, but I'm going to do something a little unusual, and I'm going to re reverse talking about the, the scripture. So I'm going to talk about the back, last part of the, part of the scripture first, and then I'll start talking about the first part at the end. So I'd like to take you to Isaiah 61. I'll give you a wee second. I'll be drinking water. I'm going to start at verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the, prisoner, the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. One of my favourite scriptures. So, Maybe a bit unconventional, this bill. I don't know if people do this. Reverse the scripture down and talk about the end of the run. But it's what God's told me to do. So our God is a God that trades. If you, you only have to look through the scripture and you'll see that he will trade you your bad for his good. He will trade whatever rubbish you're carrying and take it off you and give you something good to replace it. So whatever you're carrying at the moment that is rubbish in your life, you can hand it over to God. You can see it in Psalm 65, where he trades lack for bounty. You can see it in Ephesians 2, where he trades shame for mercy. You can see it in Joshua 1, 9, where he trades fear for courage. So whatever it is you're carrying today, and I believe, and this is for me as well, there's been things I've been carrying recently, I've had a lot of trials, like we do as Christians, um, that God wants to trade. Today's a day of trade. There's plenty of examples in the Bible where God trades things for better things. And God was speaking to me about his children. And he was saying to me, 
There are many of my children out there who are trying to restore others where they haven't traded the rubbish in their lives and be restored fully themselves. So I'm going to use this as a, a bit of a visual, because I'm a visual person, I don't know about you, when I go to meetings and people use visual things, it reminds me of that, when I see that thing during the week. So when you see a bottle of water during the week, I hope this reminds you of what I'm about to say. So when we become a Christian, that's, this bottle represents me, right? I'm just going to say it's of me. This bottle represents me and the world, full of the world. The water's the, the world, okay? So when I become a Christian, I'll take the lid off and I give it to God and I say, that's me, I'm open to you, Lord. I'm ready for whatever you want. And God starts to restore me, he starts to take some of my pain from my childhood, some of my anger. I hope this holds a whole bottle near enough. <laughs> And he continues to heal me, and he continues to restore me as I walk with him, okay? And it keeps going. I'm going to have to drink some, I think. <laughs> keeps going, and it keeps going over the years. Now I've walked with God for a good few years now, okay? And you get to a point where you feel as if you've given everything to God, Okay? But there's always that little bit in the bottom that we don't want to let go of, isn't there? There's always that little bit that's, mm, we're a bit afraid to admit that to God. We're a bit afraid to give that to God because what will they think of us? Or what will others think of us if they find out that little bit's left in us? And I heard a, a, a saying recently about, and it really struck home with me when I heard this. It was passed by Rebecca had heard it and she told me about it and it really struck home with me. 99% of obedience is still disobedience. Now, if you've given God 99% but you've still got 1% left, I'm that person. I'm not preaching to you that I'm not hearing for myself. There's 1% of me that's still not quite fully surrendered because I'm afraid to admit it to God. I'm afraid to give it fully over because of all the things I've experienced in my life. I've been let down so many times by man that, I've, that I just, there's that last bit of me just can't trust. There's just that little last bit of me can't trust. And because man's taught me that, there's a little bit of me that finds it really hard to trust God. And God said, Val, today I want to take that last bit. I want to have that last bit of you. I want you to surrender that rubbish, that last thing, that thing in you that tells you you can't speak for me because you have all these issues that you've carried all your life. You can't speak for me because you're not good enough. That's the devil. That's not God. God says you're good enough. God says you're able enough. But the devil will keep speaking in your ear and telling you, oh, I'm not, I'm not the person to speak. Somebody else can speak. I don't have the confidence to do that. Now, I can tell you several years ago, I couldn't even look another person in the eye, let alone stand up here and speak. Because I suffered from depression so badly, I couldn't even, I couldn't even engage with other people. It took all my willpower to step out of the house but God can transform you and he can change you. And if you have an, something in you, you feel, I'm not confident in that area, God can make you confident in that area. He can help you. He can restore it. And I believe there's a lot of Christians today, and that's why we're not seeing revival. There's a lot of Christians still hanging on to this little last bit. They're afraid to give it up to God. They're afraid to surrender 100% to him and go where he tells them to go. I don't like it when God says, go and prophesy over that person. My flesh says, oh no, what if I get myself into trouble? What if I say the wrong thing? What if I do something that hurts them? God says, let go of that last bit and trust me. Trust me. Is there a little bit of you that you want to trade today. Maybe you've got the ashes of a broken relationship. Maybe you have the ashes of a broken childhood. 
Maybe you've lost a loved one. Or maybe you've lost a part of yourself somewhere along the way in the troubles you've faced. Or maybe you've lost a little bit of your faith because it's been really hard recently. Maybe you're just struggling that wee bit with that last surrendering. Well, God wants to trade that today. He wants to take it off you. And he wants to make you 100% effective in ministering to other people. Because that little thing that the devil uses that your cat's still holding is what's holding you back. That little thing you haven't surrendered. Now, I'm saying little thing. It might seem like a big thing to you, but to our God, it's a little tiny thing in the vastness of his power. So I'm going to say a wee prayer just now, and I'm going to pause pause in the middle of it, and I'm going to give you a few seconds or a moment just to surrender it in your heart between you and God, because it's nothing to do with anybody else. It's between you and God. And I'm going to give you a moment to surrender it, and then we're going to move past that thing. Okay? So if we can just close our eyes for a moment. Lord, We come before you and I surrender into your hands. Let me leave this at the cross. Fill every area of my being with your Holy Spirit that I might be ready to help others in their time of need and bring them to you. Help me to walk in a new way by your Spirit and in your truth with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I believe that you've handed it over to God. And in the word of Jesus, it is finished. Don't pick it up again. Don't let him talk you into carrying it again. Don't even think about it again because it's done. You've handed it over. It's on the cross. It's no more. It doesn't exist anymore, that thing. And now we've done that part, I want to move on to the beginning. This is the exciting bit. This is the bit I've been looking forward to. This is the bit of fire. This is a bit. So, we have been anointed. The Sovereign Lord has anointed us. I don't know about you, but I am so thankful to God for that, that he has anointed me, because I could do nothing in this life without him. I am anointed. I am anointed by the Lord to proclaim the good news to poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness the prisoner. Are you not excited to release some people from captivity? Are you not excited? Are you not excited? If somebody hadn't stepped out for you, where would you be today? My wee granny hadn't been praying for me, I wouldn't be standing here today. She set me free for for their prayers because God heard her heart. Are you excited to set people free? I'm excited. And I'm going to tell you why, because I've had some experiences recently that make me more excited. God is a good God. He is amazing. (coughs) Let me drink this water. Now, the Old Testament says the anointing is upon us. We have one step ahead of that. It's in us. We carry it wherever we go. So wherever you go, wherever you encounter, you carry God with you. So in that moment, you can say, Lord, I need some help here. How do I reach this person? How do I, how do I bring you into the conversation? How do I witness to them You know, by my actions, by my words, by the way I care? We have God to call on wherever we go, at any given moment. At any time. How amazing is that? 
We've got God in speed dial. If you're out and about and you encounter a friend or a neighbour or somebody who's struggling, you have the ability to transform, to change that atmosphere. If you encounter someone that you meet in the street, even at the bus stop and you're talking to someone and they're, they're saying, oh, maybe they're, as they do in Scotland, they're pouring out about how their health's bad or how their family's giving them a hard time or how, how this is happening in their life. They're always talking about the negative. You can change the atmosphere in that moment. You can start telling them, well, I don't have that issue. I'm happy all the time because I have God. God's always with me in my circumstances. I'll pray for you. Uh, or even just say, well, I'm happy to listen. Because some people don't have anybody just to listen when they're in trouble. You think about the Bible. Moses had Pharaoh on his back chasing him. <clears throat> chasing him right down to the Red Sea. And Moses is getting the people and he's trying to get them safe. And he stops at the sea and he's like, what am I going to do? Look at this obstacle that's in my way. And he says, God, what do I do? How often do we do that when we're out and about? How often in our day when we face a challenge do we go, God, what do I do? Or do we just jump right in and try and fix it ourselves? And I've realised too often I've jumped in and tried to fix it myself rather than saying, God, how do I deal with this? I heard somebody preaching a couple of weeks ago and they said that God had told them to start a church. I think it was Sandy Jameson, actually. I don't know if you know Sandy. And he was saying that um, somebody, God had told them to start a church. So they started this church in the town in a house. And they thought, because they thought, well, starting a house, won't be many, that many people come. 19 people turned up. And then he got there and he said, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Because people were saying, what do we do next, Sandy? Do we pray? Do we do worship? Do we do this? And he's like, I don't know what to do next. And he went, excuse me, I'm just going to the bathroom. And he went into the toilet and he went, Lord, what do I do next? Because he didn't know what the next move was because he was just following God. We need to just follow God and trust him. We need to just follow him and trust him. And we need to, when we get to that point and we think, what's next? We just need to say, God, what's next? Don't try and work it out for yourself. Don't try and find a way through yourself. Just say, God, what's next? Because... If you're in his will, you're protected. If you're in his will, you're protected, you're guarded, you're safe in his arms. The minute you step out and try and do it on your own, you've opened yourself up to attack. You've opened, you've let your defences down. David, David ran and hid constantly because he didn't want to face the challenge. He hid, and he hid, and he hid, until God said to him to move. Sometimes we don't want to face the challenge. Sometimes you get up, and God says, I want you to go and do something. And you don't, you know, I, I have had this recently. God said, you need to face this person. You need to tell them honestly where you're at. That's the honourable thing to do, rather than just disappearing. And I didn't want to do it. But I had to do it because that's the way God wanted it done. He wanted it done with honour and with integrity because I'm a representative of him and my actions represent who he is. So I had to do it the honourable way. Noah. Noah had to speak up. We're building an ark. Hey, ha, ha, ha. You're building an ark. What for? How many times has God said to you to speak up? And you know, if you're angry at me, yeah. go and speak to the pastor. <laughs> go speak to the man of God that knows more. I've done that in the past. Or I've, uh, I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. Maybe you could ask my friend Grace. She's quite knowledgeable. <laughs> no. Someone's asking you. God's put someone in front of you and they're asking you about an issue, God's equipped you to answer that. He's equipped you to have the right words to encourage that person and to help that person. It's time to speak up. It's time to open our mouths. It's time 
to say what God tells us to say, regardless if you think somebody's going to laugh at you. If they laugh at you, well, the joke's going to be on them because God will have his way. God will have his way. And I have had in the past prophecies where people have laughed at me. They've actually laughed at me and said, that's a load of rubbish, don't believe a word of that. And I went home broken-hearted and cried and said to God, why did you give me that word? Why did you put me in that position where I was humiliated? Where people thought that I was telling, making up stories. But God always vindicates you. He always vindicates you because that person came back to me and said, I have to apologise to you because I was not ready to receive that word. I did not want to face the truth. <coughs> but we have to, we have to be people of God. We have to be, have his integrity, have his righteousness. We have to be honest and truthful. And there's ways to be truthful without being hurtful. There's ways to be truthful without being hurtful. We can be honest with people and give them the truth in love without sticking the knife in. We all have faults. We all have issues. We all have things that we're not great at. You don't need to tell somebody all their faults because they already know them. They already know them. And they're already probably being spoken to by God. But what you do need to do is to give them the truth in love. Esther. I love Esther. She's one of my favourite women in the Bible. I absolutely love her. She needed courage. Because she had to face a man of authority. She had to face a king. All my life I've had issues with men in authority. The devil really likes to push men with authority at me and wind me up and try and get me triggered. But God has taught me to have patience. God has taught me how to be aware of myself, to be aware of my own trigger points, to be aware of the things that have shaped my life because of my experiences as a child. But he's also taught me how to have courage and stand firm. You know, people will get in our faces. And what the devil wants you to do when people get in your face and say, I don't like you or I have this issue or that issue with you, what the devil wants you to do is do this and back off from God. But what you need to do is just do this and not move. Stand and pray and say, God, I need your help in this situation. I'm not going backwards. I'm not going back to the things I've had before, the issues I've had before. I'm standing my ground with you. You've brought me this far. And I'm not giving up any ground you've given me. But I'm standing here praying. I'm standing here waiting to hear what you want to do next. We are anointed chosen ones. We are anointed chosen ones. I don't think we say that to ourselves enough. We get in our heads too much and we start thinking all the negative things that we've experienced over life instead of saying to ourselves, we are chosen anointed ones. To, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22 says, Now he who establishes establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us as God who also sealed us and gave us the spirit in our hearts as a pledge we're not only anointed but we have his seal Christ sealed the deal he sealed the deal it's a done deed the Holy Spirit empowers us no one can break that. No circumstance, no person, nothing can break that. Only we can break that. Only us can walk away from God. But if we stand firm with him, nothing can break that. Nothing can do that. So I want us, and you might think this is a bit silly, 
but I want us to make a, a wee declaration today. And I want us to say it, how many times, God? Four times. Four times, I want you to say. Right? I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right? Let's go. I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. 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 I want you to say that to yourself during the week. When you face those challenges. I want you to keep saying that to yourself. I want you to say, I set the captives free through Christ. 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 Repeat it to yourself because the devil will tell you different. And he'll continue to put you down if you let him. The word says there's power in the tongue. So what are you using your tongue for? Are you using it to speak power over yourself? Are you using it to speak health over yourself? Are you using it to speak freedom over others? Are you using it the way that God has told you to use it? Are you using it to declare the word? I'm preaching to myself, guys. I have to correct myself a hundred times in the week. Stop speaking that. Sometimes my family say it to me. Why are you saying that? Oh, I forgot. And I have to repeat, get myself back on track. I'm going to give you a wee example of an experience I had in holiday about restoration and about transformation. And it's just to give you an idea of how the way you speak can affect the atmosphere, how you can be an atmosphere changer, how you can affect the people around you. We went, we were on holiday visiting my husband's family in England and we went, it was decided on one day that we were all going to meet together, the brother and the three sisters, because they hadn't seen each other for quite a while. And um, there's a few of them that are into different things. One really likes ghost stories and all that rubbish. And uh, one's quite elderly. Two sons don't speak to each other. And uh, if we got together, Rebecca and Alex were there, myself, Paul, and his three sisters, and the niece. We were sitting out in the garden in the sunshine, having a cuppa, chatting, and I noticed that the, the conversation was all about, oh, I'm getting old. I really don't think I can do anything anymore. Uh, I just have to stay in the house. And then another one saying, oh, I get, I'm get, i so depressed. I'm just fed up with this and that and nothing much. And so-and-so's not talking to me. And, oh, I really don't like that member of the family because they've not spoken to me for years and I don't get to see my grandchildren. And it went on for a little while. And I thought, this is, these people are bound. They're bound by negativity. They're bound by the enemy. He's convinced one that she's got depression. <coughs> And she's, she can't go outside, she can't be in the sunlight. And so much so that she's on medication because she's not getting the vitamins D from the sun. He's convinced another one that she's, she's saying, I'm going to die soon, I'm getting old. And, and then the other, the other two are going on about family situations. And I thought, they are tied up in the negativity of the devil, they really are. So I went off, off and sat myself for a wee second and just had a wee prayer. I said, Lord... What is going on here? Why are these people so negative? Why are they so bound up in like misery and you know re- everything we're saying was like they were out, out, almost rejoicing in misery and the misery they're living. Anyway, we got up to go, and uh, one of them said, "Oh, well, I hope to see you again because you know I'm getting old. I might not be here when you come back." And I'm like, 
wait a minute, when you celebrate your 90th birthday, I says, I'm coming to your party. I said, and we're going to, get, we're going to dance. I said, we're going to rejoice that you're 90 and you've lived to 90. I says, wait a minute. I says, why are you all being so miserable? I said, life's good. You've got to live life and be joyful and enjoy life. I said, it's not meant to be lived like this. And I started to almost preach to them. And I was saying to them, you know, when I was on my cruise with Paul, I said to Paul, do you want to get up and dance? Because there was a DJ on one night. And he went, oh, no, I don't really dance. Well, no. And he shied away from it. And I went, right, bye. I'm not living miserably. And I went up on the dance floor and I started dancing away in the middle of the dance floor <laughs> on my own. And then this wee girl, disabled girl, came on. She started dancing with me. And I talked to this one and that one. And they're all looking at me as if to say, why did you get up there on your own? Because that's the example of being living a joyful life. If you're happy, you can't help but show it. If you've got contentment, you can't help but show it. So I'm telling this story to these family members, and I'm going, you need to live life to the full. You need to live for hope, for joy, for happiness. Don't live for misery and being depressed, and I can't do this and I can't do that. Live for joy, live for hope, live for loving each other. Enjoy each other's company while, while we can. And they're all like, oh, yeah, you're right. And they, and they started to change their mindset. And they started to say, you're right. Yeah, I'm going to get out a bit more. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I said, good on you. Don't be tied to being miserable. Enjoy life. Enjoy each other. Love on each other. Look after each other. And I came away and I thought maybe I was a bit much. You know, like you do, you walk away and you think, maybe I'm a bit over the top. And Rebecca and Alex said to me, you were, in, you were preaching at them. That atmosphere changed. It changed from them being miserable and moaning and groaning to them being happy and having a laugh and saying, oh, yeah, if you come back and we have a party, we'll all dance together and, you know, we'll have fun and all that. And they were making jokes about what they would do. And, and I said, that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. You don't have to go up and take a Bible and shove it under somebody's face and say, there's the Bible, you need to know Jesus, get in the Bible. Yeah, that'll come. That'll come when they give their hearts. That'll come. First of all, you need to show them that life is full of joy when you're with Jesus. Life is full of love when you're with Jesus. Life is full of freedom. Freedom to get up and dance when you want to get up and dance. Because you don't care what other people think. Freedom. That's how you tell people about Jesus. You tell them about Jesus through showing the joy that he's given you. Showing the freedom that he's given you. Showing the love. Because he loved us first. We can love other people no matter what their state is. Showing that you're not going to judge people. Because we were once sinners as well before we gave our hearts. I have no right to judge anybody else in their position. But I want to show his love. And that can come in a lot of different forms. It doesn't have to be Bible bashing, street corner, grabbing people and intimidating them or whatever. It can be as simple as having coffee with somebody and saying, I'm here. You having a hard time? I'm here. You want to offload? I'm here. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm not going to take it anywhere. Except to him. You need somebody just to nip to the shop and get your pint of milk? I'm here. I'm passing the shop, so get it. You get a neighbour that's sitting in the house day after day on their own, knock the door. Hello, you all right in there? Just thought I'd pop in and see how you are. Do you need anything? I'm going to the shops. Do you want me to get you anything? How's you? How's your health? You getting better? Good. And it's good to see you're on the move again. That's Jesus. That is Jesus. That's what our neighbourhoods need. They don't need self-righteous Bible bashing people, they need the love of Christ. They need to feel that somebody's listening. How many times have you talk, tried to talk to somebody 
and you're really having a hard time and they, you just don't feel like they're listening. They're too busy telling you about their problems, their issues. Jesus wants us just to make the time to listen. In 2 Samuel 10, 12, it says, Be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. I'm asking you today, who are your people? Who are you willing to fight for? Where are you willing to start? That's what God asked me, Val. Who's your people? Who are you willing to fight for? And how are you going to start? That's what he asked me. And I've started. I've knocked on my neighbour's doors and asked if they need anything. I've, tried, uh, in the middle of that situation, I said to God, how do, I, how do I deal with this? And God said, just tell a funny, tell us the story about you dancing and tell them about love and joy. That will show them me. So who are your people? Where are you going to start? How are you, how are you going to do it? Be a bringer of good news. Be a person that reflects that scripture that says that you're anointed. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Have you got a neighbour that's brokenhearted? Have you got a friend that's brokenhearted? <coughs> or maybe even you're a bit brokenhearted. Maybe you could call on a friend that you know is real trustworthy, that you could just share how you feel and you can pray together. I've got a friend like that. It's good to have a friend that you can pray with when you're struggling. Who are you proclaiming freedom to? I want to set captives free. I want to set captives free. I want to be an atmosphere changer. I want to walk in the room and because God is with me, not because of me, but because of God is with me, the Holy Spirit is with me, that people are drawn to me and I bring the joy, I bring the hope, I bring the love, I bring the, the, the freedom. Not because of me, but because his power is resting in me, because his Holy Spirit is in me. People out there today are really struggling. You only have to walk along the street and you'll see people, they don't even smile anymore. Just smile at somebody when you go past, it's infectious. It can change the atmosphere. If you're in the shop and just say thank you so much for your help to the checkout operator. Or if you see someone with a nice outfit on, say, oh, I really like that top, it's a really nice cover on you. Breaks off the negativity straight away because we're bringing the freedom. Show your joy. Show your peace in times of trial. Show your steadfastness. That will talk more than words. And the time will come when they'll say, why are you always happy? Why is it when you have troubles, it doesn't affect you? Why is it you are such a blessing to me? And there's the open door. Because I have Jesus. Because he's transformed me. Because I used to be in the place you're in. And he's transformed me into a new person. They will ask. They will see it by your actions. They will see it by your words. And they will see it by your joy your hope, your love. They will see it by the fruits in your life, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We are his ambassadors. We carry the authority. And his spirit enables us to set the captive free. That's how we're going to transform the nation. That's how we're going to make a difference. But my thing that God wanted me to say to you today is remember you are his 
you carry the authority. Remember that you are not your past. You are not your past experiences. You are not what other people speak over you. You are his. You are sealed by his anointing. You are equipped by his anointing. And you have the ability to transform. Who are your people? Who are you going to transform? Who are you going to set free? Where are you going to start? That's what God wanted to say to us today. That's amazing.